Oh, Jerry, don't let's ask for the moon when we yeah. have the stars. Was yeah. that how the line went that I did it? Yeah. Oh, we have. Isn't it? We have the stars. Let's not ask for the moon. I don't know exactly how it goes, but it was yeah. a beautiful ending. Because, of course, the man in that was never going to be right for her. He was too weak. I always felt in Voyager that eventually she married Dr. Jack with my gorgeous Claude Rains. I always felt that. After the movie was all yeah. over, that she went and worked with him, you know, in his work. And Is that, did you often think of the movies that way, of what happened beyond them? Because not of often, the not often, but, yeah. but that was to me a, a great, great story. And by the way, speaking of that, that gorgeous woman, Miss Cooper, who played my mother, died last night. Gladys Cooper died? Oh, I'm sorry to hear And that. you know, um, without doubt, it. the most beautiful mm -hmm. person as well as actress, and a professional with all her fame and theaters named after her in England, and the great reigning beauty of England for a million years, never was she late one minute, never mm -hmm. didn't she know every line. You know, we'd have been happy to have her if she'd worked half the day. Yeah. Most beautiful. I am really sad. She and then you think, as these people go, these beautiful people go, you know, it's, it's going to be a new world. We're not going to have those, that, that same kind of person anymore. Something to that. I, I was thinking about like that today. Like when Claude Rains died. You, you couldn't bear it. You can't find mm -hmm. anybody that had... They're, they're all individuals. I had Gladys Cooper on the show when I was in London with uh, Robert Did Morley, you? and it was a wonderful uh, evening. Didn't you just think he she told was me wonderful? Afterwards that her beauty was, how old was she? Uh, she was 82. Yeah. And uh, her beauty was so, really something. He said that in, at her, in her prime, yes, said if she no. changed an article of clothing or anything that she wore, it would she immediately was the, become the rage literally all Literally the rage Europe. of London for many, yeah. many years, yes. Yeah. There's something about that, that thing you were saying, though, about we're not going to have certain kinds of people. I don't know. Well, it may be, you know, I'm not going to sit around and moan for the past. Yeah. Because, it, it, you know, it's past. It's very past in my life, too. And, you know, it, and of course, you also say, who's going next? You know, this is a terrible mm -hmm. thing that happens. And you say, maybe it's I, you know. Yeah. But it, it, it is, for our profession, it is to me so terribly depressing. I hit you like when Walter Houston died. You can't cast, you can't get that kind of a man anywhere in the world today again. There won't be any more Walter Houston roles. Well, I'll tell period. you, the English, as they've always had the majority of great male actors, always. We've had more women, they've had more beautiful male actors. Do you have any idea why? I cannot understand it, yeah. but it's always been true since way back to Ronald Coleman, Herbert Marshall, uh, C. Aubrey Smith. Hollywood has always been really predominated mm -hmm. in the star category by Englishmen. Leslie, you know, mm -hmm. all these beautiful Englishmen. Bob Herbert Hope. Marshall. Bob Hope. Oh, Bob Hope was born in England. Uh, that, that's not, well, uh, well, not the same thing. Well, it's not the same thing. Yeah. No. But there, <laughs> we, we, we both noticed that as soon as I said it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. uh, for instance, it's Richard a, Harris is I don't know who of you saw the snow goose the other night, but oh boy. Oh boy, because you see, in a way, the Englishmen are, are, are more willing to play characters. Did you mean oh boy good or oh man. boy bad? Oh boy good. Oh, yeah, oh absolutely fantastic yeah. performance. And he is going to come along to eventually be, you know, play older parts. He can play them right now. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are several Englishmen. Dick Bogart, I think, one of the greatest. Actors, uh, you know that that, that I know. So. There was something about. There was Stabbins. something about. He's just fabs. I'm dying to make a movie with him. Plays grandmother or something. With Dirk Bogart. <laughs> Except I hear he's getting along in years. It might might be just his mother. <laughs> <laughs> We're, there was something about you and Claude Rains together on the screen, and again, it was one of those things that it's silly to try to describe what it was. And I, but well, I of course, he petrified me. The that. first time I played him was it was in Carlotta. And I had to make an entrance into the King of France domain mm -hmm. for a rehearsal. And he was playing the King of France in rehearsal, because, you know, all of us uh, other era people, we, we don't just run through lines and then say, turn the camera. We rehearse beforehand. Very old-fashioned. Ridiculous today. Just go in and do it, you know. But anyway, Claude and I couldn't. So he was the King of France who loathed Carlotta. And I was a kid and petrified of Mr. Raines. So I thought he hated me. I didn't know he was playing the character. I thought he oh. thinks I just 
Jake, what am I going to do? <laughs> and and uh, but eventually we worked together quite a lot. Eventually we became really great friends. We was were he, really great friends. Was he a happy man? I like to think so because he, he gave me so much pleasure. Well, I think as happy as any. I, I don't think as, as a group actors are what I'd call happy people. Mm -hmm. I think we're very moody people. I think we have, you know, great ups and great downs. And if something goes well or if something turns out badly, you're depressed for days. And I think we're terribly peculiar that way and rather lonely people, actually. Yeah. So Claude, I could not say, was a happy person. He was witty, amusing, and beautiful. Really mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, thoroughly enchanting to be with. And brilliant. His know. entrance in Deception, that movie I saw just oh, the other night. Was he in that? He comes in and says, a party, indeed. Oh, yes, he was so uh, wonderful in that. one of the that. best entrances. It was worth the whole thing, because the picture wasn't yeah. terribly good, but he was so much. And the restaurant scene where he was talking about all the food. Order, oh. yeah, yeah. Brilliant. And, of course, in Skeffington, he was absolutely brilliant, yeah. as, as the husband, just brilliant. There is that thing, it has to do with what you're talking about, about there are people you say of your era or some phrase you used like that you could see them in movie after movie that wasn't particularly great but you thought gee I'd like to know that person or they're really a dynamite personality or they're yeah. really something now if you see a bad movie the actors are on the same level as the movie they don't seem to stand out in it you don't seem to say I, I, I hate to generalize like this well, but no, it seems we like there were more cases but it, it, it was much less sort of effort put into it you, you know I think acting should look as if we were working a little you know. should get a little credit for your craft. Yes, and, you know, it's yeah. like the juggler who loses the, twice and then he gets it, you know, finally. Yeah. Uh, which goes, which is a very old-fashioned theory today. You see, we mustn't have any idea that anybody knows the camera's on them at all. Mm -hmm. You see, it's just life. Well, we all have life. Uh, it's 24, uh, 12 hours a day, and sometimes we want to forget life, you know, and I think it should be a little larger a little than bigger. life. A little bit theatrical. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to do this just life-size now. We will return after this message.